In this presentation, we will record the journal entry to issue common stock when cash is not received. We're going to issue the common stock and receive equipment instead. So issuing common stock for non-cash assets. The information will be on the left side. We're going to record the journal entry here in the general journal. Then we'll post it not to the general ledger, but to a worksheet. Here's our beginning balance. This is where we will post it. Here's our ending balance. This will give us a quick look at uh, the effects on the accounts as well as the effect on the accounting equation. We've got the assets in green, we've got the liabilities in orange, the equity in light blue, the revenue and expenses in dark blue. We can see that we're in balance because the, the debits are non-bracketed or positive for Excel and bracketed or credited for Excel are credits. Debits minus the credits equals zero, that's what the green zero indicates. No net income is shown here at this time. This is just going to be a very you know, short trial balance to give us an idea of something in balance so that we can see the effect. It really is helpful for us to see a balancing mechanism and actually post these journal entries to something to a trial balance so we can see the effect on it and the effect on the accounting equation. We of course are going to be focusing here on the equity section for a corporation. That's what typically differs for a corporation and that will be broken out in terms of we're looking at common stock paid in capital for common stock and then the retained earnings not what we're focusing on here but noting that the retained earnings is the accumulation of the revenue less any uh, distributions to the owners dividends and the common stock represents how much the owners have invested in terms of capital investment okay so we're going to go over here we're going to say that there's 20 issue 20,000 shares of five dollar par stock for equipment valued at 150. So this is similar to just uh, if, if someone wanted to buy into the corporation. Remember this is different from trading because we're not buying from another individual like a stock trade typically would be. We're buying stock from the corporation and rather than giving the corporation cash for that stock we're just giving something else of value in this case equipment. So to do that we need to kind of know the value of the equipment that we're, what that we're giving uh, so that that'll determine basically the market price of the stock and that's really the confusing component here uh, and it may actually work the other way around we might know the market price of the stock because it's changing it's exchanging possibly on a market exchange and therefore the negotiation process might tell us basically what the equipment cost is but in any case there's a market transaction happening here and therefore it's going to determine uh, the market transaction will determine or tell us what the price is of the equipment and or the market price of the stock. That will differ then from the par value, the par value just being an arbitrary number that we assign to the stocks in order to standardize them. So to record this first we're going to say well is cash affected? Quit. And the answer for the corporation no we didn't get cash we sold it for equipment. So what did happen is that we got another asset we got equipment. What did we get? equipment. Equipment's also an asset, it's got a debit balance. We need it to go up, so we're going to do the same thing to it, another debit. So I'm going to copy the equipment in F8, right click and copy. We'll put that up top in B2, right click and paste, one, two, three, just the values. We could type that in, that in there as well if we so choose. The amount's just going to be the market value of the equipment, so they're going to typically give that in a problem we'd have to figure out what that would be in practice and if our stock is traded on the exchange then uh, whatever we determine that might help us to determine the, the market price of the equipment so we're gonna say the equipment is worth 150,000 then we're going to credit something now we're gonna credit something in the capital section as we would just if we invested equipment in a sole proprietor or a partnership but this time we're going to issue stocks. So it's going to be some type of stock issuance that is going to be given for that equipment. That's going to be the common stock. So it's a credit balance representing what is owed to the owners. We're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another credit. So I'm going to right click on the common stock, right click and copy, put that in B3, right click and paste one, two, three, or we can just type it in there. The tricky thing is that it's not going to be a credit of 150,000. Why? Because there's a par value and the par value is just going to be a standardized value. So uh, it's not going to change with the market price. When we sell the stock, we're going to sell it for whatever we can. 
and therefore we're gonna whatever equipment as much equipment as we can get we're gonna sell it for that because that's what we do on the market price the par value will just give us a standard number so that it will standardize this number um, so all we're gonna do on the, on, on the par value is take the 20,000 shares we issued times 5 and that'll be the 100,000 so I'm gonna do that with a calculation here by saying rather than equals negative 20,000 times 5 and that'll be the negative 100,000 the difference between the 150 we got in value for the equipment and the we 100,000 is 50,000 what we need as a credit here in order to be in balance I'm gonna do that with our negative sum function which is the plug formula negative sum double click the sum function highlight the 150 to the 100 and that'll give us the 50,000 as a negative the 100 and the 50 now of course equaling the 150 debit what accounts should that go to additional paid in capital so remember that remember that these two represent what has been given to the company so in terms of a capital investment and that's different we're going to break that out differently here unlike we do in a partnership or sole proprietor to what has been earned less what has been distributed in terms of dividends so the retained earnings is what still remains in terms of earnings over and above what was initially invested these two common stock additional paid in capital represent what was additional what was initially invested why do we need two accounts to give that because the par value will standardize those common stocks so that we can know exactly from this number how many stocks were issued by dividing it by the par value and the additional paid in capital will just represent whatever was paid over and above that par value because that will change with the market price as the market price changes so this is going to go up it has a credit balance we're going to do the same thing to it another credit we're going to copy this cell or this in f12 right click and copy we're going to put that in b4 right click and paste one two three there's going to be our journal entry let's post this out now so here's the equipment account on our journal entry here it is on the trial balance we're going to be here in h8 where we will say equals point to that 150,000 bringing the zero balance up by 150 to 150. here's the common stock we're going to be down here on common stock something's in it already this is not the initial stock offering we're, we're issuing more stock at some point in the future from the initial stock offering we're going to say equals and point to that 100,000 bringing the 500,000 up by 100,000 to 600,000 then we're going to go to the paid in capital right underneath here's the paid in capital on the journal entry here it is on the trial balance we're here in H12 where we will say equals point to that 50,000 bringing the 60 up by 50 to 110 note that the equipment went up no effect on net income however even though we got you know something of value we got equipment uh, we, the, the company did not earn any revenue to get that equipment what they did is pay, give out some capital uh, some earning potential in the company and so that's what the, so that the ownership went up or the amount that's owed back to the owners in essence went up okay so that's going to be our transaction we're going to go then over here and take a look at just the equity section of um, the calculation of equity in in like more of a financial statement format where we would see this kind of confusing component in terms of the wording we would have to say that the common stock there's five dollar par common stock this is the amount that was authorized meaning they have the ability to issue up to 150,000 shares and how many are issued and outstanding we can find that by looking at our numbers here we can say well there's six hundred dollars worth of common stock divided by the par value which is five dollars means one hundred twenty thousand are issued and outstanding so that's kind of that's that's what's useful about that kind of symmetry one hundred twenty thousand and then if we go over here we're gonna put uh, in M10 we're going to take this amount put it in m10 so that's going to be i don't want to i don't want to credit we want it to make it positive so i'm going to say negative of that number and enter 
And then we're going to do the additional paid in capital. We're going to put that here in M11, once again, rather than equals negative of that number and enter. I'm going to sum them up on the right side in N11 by saying equals SUM. Double click the sum function, highlight the 600 and the 110 or 710. Then we'll just pull over the retained earnings, retained earnings, which we're not really dealing with in this problem. They would be affected by the accumulation of net income or closing net income out to retained earnings. So we're going to say uh, negative of this number. And then if we sum this up, it'll be the sum of these two. We're just adding these two up. 710 plus 658. That will be the total there. I'm going to fix this real quick so our accounting equation works up top. Okay, so there is that. And so this is going to be the, our equity section. This is what would be owed to if it was just one owner. You can think of that if it was all the all this corporation was owned by one person who owned all the corporate stock, then this would kind of be like the net value. In other words, it equals the assets minus the liabilities. 1,368,000. How do we know who to pay that to? We know who to pay that to just by how many shares they have because all the shares are equal meaning if we liquidated the company sold the equipment paid off the liabilities we would have 1,638 if we sold for that would be the book value if everything worked out perfectly and then we could just pay that uh, in, in accordance with the, the shares basically because all the shares if there's only common stock shares are all the same so that's the beauty of the corporation versus a partnership where, of course, we have to track each individual partner's capital account because how much will be owed to the partners will differ. And the only way we know that is by tracking their capital account. With a corporation, how much is owed to the owners will differ. But the way we know that is that they just own more or less stock, which is just like kind of owning more or less dollars. They're all standardized units. So um, that's going to be the one of the principal differences in the equity section between a corporation and something like a sole proprietorship or partnership.